recording. And boom, we're live. It's that simple. One button, set it all up, all that good stuff. There you go. Anyway. What's happening, party people? We're back. I got one of my bestest friends, Cabell, with me. She's the one who helped me come up with the name and finally gave me that kick in my fucking ass <laughs> to start this podcast. So, Cabell, what's happening? I want to move to touch. <laughs> Just hanging out with these adorable doggos. For real. Like I said, I mean, that's the only reason people tune into the YouTube to see, why are they yelling about these dogs? Anyway, so, get, go. Oh, he's fine. I know, but he's going to lick your hands and then it's going to turn into your face and he'll try to eat the camera. Not the camera, the microphone. (laughs) Anyway, tell people a little bit about yourself so they know what's up. Uh, My name is Cabell. Um... Friends with Emmett. <laughs> Friends with these dogs. That's it. <laughs> um, I'm a longtime bartender, longtime roller derby and roller skater. Um, I have an eight year old daughter. Um, that. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> so, anyway, that's how roller derby is how I met you. It is. Yeah. Lindsay, yep. Which I remember I went to a game before I met Lindsay and all that stuff not a game about i'm sorry a game is fine it's yeah, a game i went to a bout <laughs> and i remember i remember watching i was like what in the fuck is going on here and the person that brought me was just like all right here are the rules this is how it all works and da 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 and it was just information overload and my eyes started floating backwards and i was like this is nonsense so it's just it's i wit i love roller derby i love it to death i just wish it was a little bit more approachable on that first time yeah, you definitely owe you know, your first time. It's good to go with somebody who has been before so that they can explain the uh, the uh, semantics of it all. I mean, it's, it's basically just a race on skates. <laughs> and it's, or do what I did and date one of the roller girls and then learn how it works and then get way too fucking involved. <laughs> That's how it goes. That's it. <laughs> It was funny. I was like, yeah, roller derby's cool. I just let Lindsay do her thing. And then the second week... I mean, we yeah, were... that's one of the things you join. It's like, oh, you have a boyfriend? You have you have friends? Like, well, we need some help. Bring oh, yeah. them out. We need some, we need, we need some uh, strong backs and weak minds, if you don't mind. And she's like, our second week together. And I'll never forget it. She calls me up on like a Thursday. And she's like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? And I'm like, I-, I don't know what. She's like, do you want to drive to Charlotte and go do a roller derby belt? I'm like... Yeah, fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it was nonsense. And then it just as as I kept going and going to bouts and stuff like that and got to know more of y'all, I just realized like, holy shit, this is amazing. <laughs> it's like, how do you make friends as an adult? Join a roller derby league or date one of the players. <laughs> it's true. It comes it comes with a whole family for sure. Yes. It the does. good and the bad. <laughs> oh, the bad. <laughs> But I mean, I've I've always said there's like, just there's so much that goes into it that you don't really realize. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of a lot of behind the scenes stuff that takes time and sacrifice and all that good stuff, and then people don't realize it. I'd say probably a good ninety percent of the people that go watch roller derby bouts are like, "Oh man, this is awesome!" They just show up, strap some skates on, and start hitting each other. <laughs> this is sick. And then what they don't understand is that before that bout, you had oh I don't know forty five fucking practices, <laughs> absolutely, and all that good shit. Yeah. And then what? Most of you skate in your free time. Most of you have been skating for a long time. And then, of course, you're doing practices as well. Yes. So it's just skate, 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 (laughs) skate, touch more skating. And then you do the bout. And then it's just like it all comes to fruition. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's nutty. It's absolutely, the I, I had never seen it before. I went to that very first bout. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And then two years later, I got, I started dating Lindsay. Yeah, even though it's, you know, technically like a a recreational voluntary sort of thing, like it's definitely like all in or not. Like once you get started, oh, like yeah. a, you know, a lot of people come out and they don't realize how much of a dedication like it really is. Um so once once you get involved, you definitely have to yeah. be all in or it's not going to yeah, it's one work. of those things. It's like you start doing it, and it's like, yeah, there are some people that could probably just drop in for like a practice a week and stuff like that, but we don't want that. We want people who want to fucking do shit. Exactly. I mean, well, especially with us being a smaller league, mm-hmm. like, you know, even though Wilmington is, you know, a pretty good size, mm-hmm. there is 
still a really hard time of, of not only getting people, but, but keeping them as well. There's a very, I guess, like higher turnover rate where mm -hmm. then like you have the, the big cities and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they, they hold like actual tryouts because they have so many people that want to do it. So mm -hmm. then you have a much easier time of being able to have the different levels within it. Whereas yeah. with us in the smaller league, there's really only, you know, one level to it so like you we decided to be a competitive team as mm -hmm. a, as opposed to a recreational team whereas mm -hmm. a lot of those bigger teams you can have that choice to skate for for the competitive part or it can be more of just like a fun recreational thing yeah. and it would be great if we could have both obviously um but that's just unfortunately never something that our league has had the mm -hmm. luxury of being able to choose so i mean as far as like for wilmington because i know some of those bigger leagues like they have three different fucking teams yeah they have the competitive team excuse you sir we're recording <laughs> Chuck, go lay down just go lay down lay so, down so exciting buddy. he's so excited because it's new people okay, come on go <laughs> but it's like those three those bigger teams they have like three different teams they have their competitive they have their in-house, and then they have their rec league. Mm -hmm. And I mean, so what is it? Whenever and the, you... then these days, there's also the junior league as well. Oh yeah, the kids. That's what like I remember. Whenever I was way too involved than I should have been, I remember me and uh, Brickhouse talking about it. Like, dude, we'd love to get a juniors team together, but we have a hard enough time getting people just to show up to practice. Exactly. How are we going to get their kids to show up to practice <laughs> for, like, something that it's, one, it's not a school sport. Well, I mean, it's not necessarily about getting the kids to show up. It's about having the people there in order to, who are able to teach the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, so, like, if they're not even coming for their own benefit, then why are they coming for somebody else's benefit? True. Absolutely. Which, you know, I mean, you know everybody's different so you do have those people who are much more inclined like our coaches who who do come in and, and dedicate a lot of time mm -hmm. without being like an actual skater and being involved in that sort of way mm -hmm. but um again we just don't have the luxury of, of enough of those people <laughs> so i mean do you, so as far as for kate fear roller girls do you think it's just i mean obviously i don't think it's a notoriety thing because fucking everybody knows just about everybody i talk to that sees the sticker on the back of my truck or i wear one of the shirts a good chunk of people come up to me like, oh, okay, for your roller girls, da, 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 I love them, blah, blah, It's like, all right, cool, so why aren't you skating? Women, obviously. <laughs> and I'm just like, why aren't you skating? And they're like, oh, well, and I never quite get good answers. Do you think it's just people don't want to sacrifice the time, they don't want to put in the commitment? or? Well, I mean, it's, it, that's, a, that's a hard to say because mm -hmm. until they come out and experience mm -hmm. it, then then they don't really know what exactly goes into it. And, you know, you have a couple of different type of people. One, it's like, I'm older. Mm. I don't think I can do it. But then also, I'm worried about getting hurt. And, oh, that, and that's a big part. Not everybody is physical in that sort of way. Um, you know, me, I, I love the physical aspect of it. Mm. I, I love um, the contact sport of it. Um, and a lot of people don't want to do that a lot of people don't want that physical i'm gonna hit you i'm gonna you know use my body to block you a lot of people don't want to do that mm -hmm. um and and it is a real thing like even though we do have insurance people have lives outside of this and so if something were to happen to them and they got injured like mm -hmm. what is that going to take out of their life you know we don't get paid to do this we don't we don't get any any sort of benefits in real life yeah. <laughs> really i mean not that it's not real life yeah. but you know the benefits of it like what happens if i get hurt yeah no, and, and that's a very real and valid um reaction to mm -hmm. to considering doing something like that yeah i mean that activity it costs you money it does it's not a, it's yeah not like a, i get so a to lot... go and get sweet gear and i get sponsorships and mm -hmm. i get paid off it. yeah no, no, a lot of people throughout the years ask you know like how much i get paid to do it and it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's I so them. laughable. <laughs> yeah, I pay no. them to show I pay to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, even with a smaller league, our travel league, you know, we we make it so, like, most of the travel is paid for mm -hmm. um, by the team. So yeah. there there is there is that. Um, but you're buying everything yourself, your, yep. your gear, your skates, mm -hmm. your everything, your time. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you've been doing it for... You you were one of the OG founders of KP Roller Girls. I right? am, yes. So that's 13, 14 years? Yeah, around, yeah. Somewhere probably closer to around like 15 years 15? at this point. Okay. 
the last number that I knew hard yeah. set in stone was 13, so I was going with that. <laughs> but it's like, what? I think the biggest thing is like, what's the biggest change that you've seen in roller derby? Uh, well, I mean, just the game itself, how mm -hmm. it's evolved over the years. Whereas, you know, like in the beginning, none of us really knew what we were doing when we first started. <laughs> and it was all, it was a lot more theatrical. It was, mm -hmm. I mean, I was never really into like the bout, they call them bout fits, you know, like the crazy yeah. outfits and the makeup and things like that. You know, it was a lot more about the theatrics. It was mm -hmm. a lot more like old school, you know, wrestling style. It's, a, mm -hmm. it's about the really big hits and the really big falls and the going fast. Mm -hmm. And, and it's. I love that derby because it's it's a lot of fun. Entertaining um, gets people going. Exactly, it is very entertaining. And so throughout the years, like you know, teams picking apart the rules and figuring out these like tiny little things that they can do in order to manipulate the game, basically. Yeah. Um. And so at this point, like the rules are still still edited every year, basically. Like they're still like everything is still changing. So. Mm -hmm. It's it's slightly frustrating because at some point it's like when are we gonna pick like an actual set of mm -hmm. rules and stick to that set mm -hmm. of rules? But at the same time, I get that we're also like figuring out as it goes, and so like if something needs to be tweaked for the better, then then sure, like let's mm -hmm. do that. But at this point, when it has been fifteen years, like and you know there's there's those times like when the Olympics come around, they're like put roller derby in the Olympics, and it's like well no because we still change our rules <laughs> like. Yeah, which rule say you? Gonna go uh, yeah, I love gonna roller go derby, with, uh, but we don't deserve to be in there. What is it? There's... Are there amazing athletes yes. who who absolutely yes for sure, and uh, you know maybe well, there... eventually one day if we're ever allowed to skate again. Well, there's that one girl who she did the was it the inline speed skating? Who's a roller derby girl? Yes, you're speaking of um, no Moda. Moda. Um, Julie. Okay. Can't remember what her last name is right I didn't now. Know what so yeah, name. she was an Olympic speed yeah. skater. Did she for go many to years. roller derby or did she come from roller derby? No, she went to roller derby. Oh, okay. So yeah, she gotcha. was she was already like mm -hmm. you know a nationally or world mm -hmm. acclaimed um, speed skater before that. Mm -hmm. And so she, because her name was Adam Matrix when she first started, so she started Adam mm -hmm. and Adam Wheels. Oh, really? Yes, and that went south, and that's when she branched off and started her own brand, which is Moto, which is Adam Backwards. And so that's where Moto comes from. Oh, how nifty. Mm -hmm. Look at her. Wait. But she went off the deep end. That's what I was just about to ask. I was like, wait a minute. Moda. And then just kept buckling down That's and just right. going. I forgot. We're not cool with Moda. My bad. Yeah, there was another... You know, to each their own. They can support whatever they want to support. I don't yeah. want to, you know, tell anybody what they're allowed to support and feel and whatever. Yeah. Um, but I me want... personally, mm -hmm. as somebody who had, had had skin in the game, had bought their products mm. and been a fan of hers and, mm -hmm. you know, wanted to support uh, uh, a woman, mm -hmm. I mean, not necessarily a woman, um, but, you know, like a, a derby skater mm -hmm. who, who was kind of, you know, had, had formed the saying, you know, within mm -hmm. that, like it always want to try to support the smaller mm -hmm. businesses and things like that. Um, but <clears throat> when certain things come to light, you just can't support that <laughs> anymore. Mm -mm. And when you're like really like doubling down and then like pushing it and being like, well, y'all are all crazy and Derby, you know, <laughs> der Derby as a whole is the problem. And it's like, okay. If, if you have a, if <laughs> you're you, pretty deep in there, aren't you? <laughs> if you have a problem with everybody around you, <laughs> I think it might be time to look in the mirror and do some self-reflection. I'm not saying that derby is a perfect sport by any means. There are, are a lot of, oh, of no. a lot of faults mm -hmm. in there on a lot of different levels, mm -hmm. um, and I completely get you know why certain people have walked away and for what reasons. Mm -hmm. And and as inclusive inclusive as we like to think that we are, we're not at the same time. No. And a lot of leagues are trying to do their best to to fix that and rectify it and mm -hmm. change it but at the same time it is a very still a whitewash sport you know like yeah. when the history of roller skating comes from poc mm -hmm. and that's you know you would you would think that 
more of that would be included within it. Yes. And unfortunately, even at this point, it's it, it's not a thing. Huh. Um, sure, especially like in the bigger bigger leagues in the big cities, there are a lot more um, inclusive mm-hmm. teams that that. But I mean, for us, it's it's always been a struggle. Like mm-hmm. how how do we reach this certain demographic and get them involved and want them to be involved? Um, but little kiss break. <laughs> it's it's hard as well because like when you don't have that to begin with, you need somewhere to start in yeah. order to make that change, and it becomes like this little bit of a cycle of like how how do we become more inclusive? Yeah, and like being inclusive, I want everybody to have a good time. Everybody, absolutely. I don't care what you do. I don't care who you are. I don't care how you think. I still want you to have a good time, even if I'm diametrically fucking opposed to everything <laughs> you stand for. Still want you to be happy. But I mean you are Captain Friendly. I am Captain Friendly, my friend. But it's like Friendo, I said friendly. It's all right. Either or. But it's like when you get to be so inclusive <clears throat> that and mind you, this is just my perspective from seeing things. When you get to be that inclusive where you're like, everybody come on and everything like that, I think you ha- you run into an issue of like you get people in there that are like they want to be a part of something, but then they start trying to grab reins and start trying to con- like move things a certain way, and it's that's the one thing that I see with with roller derby in particular is that you get you've got a lot of people together, and they all have their own ideas and everything like that. And in some of the, I mean, in the smaller leagues, I think it'd be a harder thing to like, hey, have this. I hate to use the word hierarchy, but like a structure of like, hey. Top dog is the president. They pretty much run it down. Sure. And a lot of the smaller leagues that I've heard from is that the bottom's still trying to run things from the bottom. And a lot of the... Well, I mean, I think with within anything that involves a group of people, mm-hmm. you're always going to have subsets within those groups. Yes. You, you know, certain people are going to gravitate towards certain groups and certain people are going to hang out with each other. And, you know, it's that when these little groups start talking here, this little group's talking here, and it ends up being like more of like a, a like almost like a telephone game mm. of, of what's happening. It gets a lot harder. Whereas like, you know, yes, the president is the head, but the point is that like the entire board is what controls it, but it's also supposed to be like a, a all-inclusive league decision on everything so like the board is working for the entire team and everybody has a voice and no matter how many times you preach it it's like if you have a problem then bring it up and let's talk about it and let's not whisper behind people's backs about anything like the put it on the table and let's talk about it Mm -hmm. so anytime that i've been on the board and and the president when people come to me and start being like well i heard this and i heard that this person is saying that I call a league meeting and say, look, this is, this is what I've heard about. The, the, these are the whispers that I've heard. So if anybody has anything to say, then say it now, let's put it out on the table. Let's yeah. figure it out. And, and let's not do that sort of thing. Let's, let's have everything as, as open communication as you can. Absolutely. Because the, the, your breakdown of communication is going to destroy any kind of anything you're involved. In. Absolutely. Relationship, sports team, sure. Bugging, business, whatever you're doing if you yeah. have if you don't have those lanes of open communication and people think that they're being um i don't know if the word's right or not but if they think they're being marginalized and their problems are being ignored you're going to have those fucking absolutely issues. and you're going to have people who they create those groups and those friendships within whatever organization they're in and then it's going to kind of turn into a us versus them mentality yeah and then shit just goes completely off the fucking rails at that point and then you start getting like, oh, well, oh, wow, we, we, we haven't seen so-and-so in like probably two or three weeks. I wonder what happened. And then finally somebody reaches out to him. And they're like, yeah, I'm just just not a fan of how everything's going. And it's like, you couldn't have told us when the shit was happening? Absolutely. And, I mean, you know, sometimes there are situations where, like, even if it is brought up, you know, it's just kind of the way that personal interactions go like not everybody is going to have the greatest time Mm -hmm. you know we've had people that walked away and walked away with a very bad taste in their mouth and Mm -hmm. and unfortunately like we we can't you can't fix everything and you can't please everyone as much as you as much as you try to Mm -hmm. um 
especially a, you know being a volunteer thing. You know? Yes. <laughs> like it's. Yes, because like there's nothing really holding them there. Yeah. There's nothing. But like within it, so like you know dealing with with all of these things has has made me better understand how to deal with a lot of things in my life as well. You know, mm -hmm. like being a better manager mm -hmm. um, at my work, uh, being a better communicator within my own family and relationships like that like you know when you when you stop and shut the fuck up and and listen <laughs> and then approach it you know even you know taking time to mm -hmm. think about things before you react and respond and and you know it's i lost my train of thought i don't know where i was going <laughs> i know where you were going from it gave it gives you Gives you a lot more. Gives you a lot more cards in the deck to play with. It does absolutely on how to approach and solve yeah. different issues. And it's like stop. If you got a problem looking like this, stop going that way. If you literally take a half step this way and you go that way, the shit might work. Yeah. And well, fuck that doesn't work. All right, back up, take another step. <laughs> yeah. Take another step. I fucking go the other way. It. All it is to like when it when it comes to things like that is I mean you've seen it. I'm not afraid of confrontation. I will straight up walk up on. Some, fuck's the deal we got problems what's up and i'm not saying that's the right way to handle things that's just how i've done it yeah but when you get more of those more of that knowledge more of that experience and things like that in your head you realize that hey walking up to somebody and just be like hey we got a fucking problem isn't the right way <laughs> well everybody reacts and deals with it in different ways mm -hmm. so as you know some people are really bad about confrontation mm -hmm. and so like within i, I and I can kind of go either way. Like, I, I have a very strong voice and strong opinions. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I can come off very brash and very, very loud and things like that. But then there's also situations where it just, like, completely shuts me down. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you, you know, I will just shut down and not say anything and then probably cry. <laughs> and then step back and, and approach it from a different way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, sometimes that sort of approach can just scare people away. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, but that's the thing. Everybody wants to be all, well, we need to solve these problems and we need to do this. And I, I'm just talking in general, obviously. We need to be able to do this. We need to be able to do that. We need to be able to communicate and everything like that. But you also have to be able to comprehend what you're communicating. And who's going to step up and do it? <laughs> Who? Anybody? Anybody. <laughs> so you want to talk about it, but you don't want to do it. I know it's easier said than done, but at some point, well, you have to do it. Yeah. I'll do everything I can to help you. And sometimes that, that is people's escape. Is mm -hmm. like, I'm going to step away and I'm going to ignore, ignore this and I'm not, I'm not going to even give it the time of day. Yeah. And that doesn't in the end fix anything. You Generally know? speaking. But no. overall, out of sight, out of mind, and I'm done with that now, and I don't have to deal with that anymore. What's the old saying? Ignorance is bliss, my friend. <laughs> I don't know what to think about that. <laughs> I try not to because I like to be educated on a lot of different shit. I would shit. love to be much dumber than oh, I am. Oh, so would I. I would love well, to Well, I say that, but I don't think I really want to. <laughs> no, absolutely not. It's just like, I. you know what? I would like it if it was like a drink. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, man, I just don't feel like, I don't feel like 100% brain power today. Let me get the dumb juice out. <laughs> yeah, Take right. Take a shot of dumb juice for like 30 well, minutes. Well, I mean, I guess that's kind of what. <laughs> yeah, but you got to drink a lot of it. I'm talking about like a shot of it and it knocks you down for 30 minutes. For 30 minutes, you just don't work about anything. You're not worried. But you don't care. They have those out there too. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm not do. suggesting you go get them and do them. But... By no means are we suggesting doing any of this. We are simply not talking. All. all right? Sad Kid Crew Productions is not liable for any dumb Ooh, shit I mean, that you stupid motherfuckers decide to it do. It kind of goes into play of, like, you know, that's why a lot of people do get into the, you know, certain situations and lifestyles and things like that is because it's a lot easier to run and hide and, and it's ignore. An it's an escape. It's 100% an escape because you got fucking... I mean, I'm a mechanic through my day job. Fucking, being You're a mechanic? Me yeah, I am a mechanic. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. I know me standing at the door, sometimes it throws people off. They're like, hey, are you, you a mechanic? But, like, being a mechanic's fucking tough shit. It sucks. Because everything, nothing wants to cooperate with you. You have to force everything. You're using, I don't know, three quarters of your fucking brain to figure out, why isn't this fucking headlight working? Uh -huh. And silly shit like that. Whenever I come home. But at the same time, you have, I assume you have learned, you know, your checklist of, of what do we go about? How do we go about fixing this? 
So we, you know, there are, you know, your different avenues of like how you figure out what is wrong with mm -hmm. it. You know, your your diagnosis mm -hmm. of of well, it's not this, so it could be this, and it's mm -hmm. not this, and it's that. So you are stepping back and 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 using your brain to solve mm -hmm. to solve the problem. That's why when I get home, I take a shower, I eat some food, and I grab a beer, and I escape into video games. Yeah. Because it's like, I don't no. have to do anything. Well, yeah, give, so give your easy. mind a rest in that sort of way. Fuck yes. Oh, my God. It's horrible. You know, as much as I love being a parent, but you spend an mm -hmm. entire day of, you know, your focus being on another human being, mm -hmm. and not only your focus, but, you know, trying to teach them mm -hmm. and engage them mm -hmm. and do all these different things. And when they go to bed, it's just like sitting down on the couch and being like, oh, God. Oh. And, you know, so you have people this. over, like other people in the house, and they're like, well, let's talk about this now. And it's like, I don't want to talk about anything anymore. <laughs> I want to shut my brain off. Exactly. <laughs> That's why I, I, I like to think that whenever I'm talking to people, especially because, I mean, I don't have kids. A lot of our friends do. Well, excuse me. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, these beers. Generally, whenever I'm talking to people like you or um, Curves or any of the people that have kids, the first five minutes, I'm figuring out, all right, how intelligent, how heavy do we want to do this conversation? What do we need to do here? And then by about five, ten minutes in, you figure out, all right, cool. We're just here for dumb shit, or <laughs> we're here to talk about the world's problems behind closed yeah. doors. <laughs> and it's, I don't, like I said, I don't have kids, but I can only imagine you're watching this tiny human that if left alone, won't make it. They won't. They won't make it. And it's like, maybe. What? Yeah, depends on the kid, obviously. <laughs> Yours would be fine. But. If you leave that tiny human alone for enough amount of time, depends on the size of the human. Yes, <laughs> you, they're not gonna, they're not gonna be okay. So a hundred percent of your time around them is dedicated <clears throat> to make sure that they make it to that point where they can take care of absolutely. Themselves. And you know, like within that, so like sure, like I say, like sure, she'd be all right physically. You know, she could make it, but that doesn't mean that mentally she'll be okay. Oh. Or, you know, whoever will be yes. okay after that. So, like, yes, you can survive and endure. And, you know, kids are a lot more intelligent than we give them credit for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's, there's, I'm sure there's plenty of stories out there um, where younger kids were able to, to sustain mm -hmm. on their own from a very young age. Um, but the, the emotional trauma that then entails ends up, not good. Not good, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not good. We're in, you know, like they're a lot more susceptible to the escapism things when mm -hmm. they get older, Absolutely. you know, unfortunately. And it's, it, it, it's fucking wild to me. It still is. Like, kids are fucking crazy to me. I realize that both you and I used to be kids. <laughs> but holy fucking shit. <laughs> Just like looking at the shit now, I'm like... Well, what yeah. happened? <laughs> I mean, even the difference of like how I parent as opposed to like how my parents parent. Yeah. You know, the times were completely different, but mm -hmm. you know, I come from a big family and I'm uh, I am one of the older kids in that family. But you know, thinking back and being like, "Oh wow, they just left us a lot." <laughs> I mean, that's like, how was I in control of that? <laughs> like, <laughs> that doesn't like I couldn't have, I couldn't imagine doing something like that yeah. and not, you know, don't want to like talk down about my parents because I absolutely love them and and I get where you're going. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh it's it's wild to to think about the different parenting styles. Yes. And of course everybody's different and in, in, mm -hmm. in different worlds and and on a lot of different levels. Oh yeah. Um, it's just crazy to me. Like I remember when I was a kid, like we'd go home, we'd get in the house, lock the door, and you wait till mom gets home. And now it's like, you go home, you don't lock the door. Oh, we were just a free-for-all. Well, then again, you kind of also grew up like a hippie, didn't you? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Did you absolutely. live on like a legitimate commune or anything like that? Or was it just like a uh, No, not, it's not necessarily like a, a commune. I, I guess know. I guess we were kind of in society. So like down in Oak Island, but you oh, know, okay. just like third row from the beach. <laughs> Very free-spirited. <laughs> 
free love, man. Go check <laughs> you know, out we the were wave. All, well, you know, we we were all raised as vegetarian, and at the time mm. that that was like creepy and weird, and like, now it's now it's like a cool thing. Oh yeah, we were made fun of constantly growing up. Vegetarians like, it wasn't were creepy a, and weird. Yeah, people when, when when people don't understand things. Well, yeah. Then they branded a certain way. So, yeah, growing up, I mean, you know, Brunswick County is definitely, it's not a big city. It's a small town. It's a very southern, mm-hmm. backwoods sort of mm-hmm. rednecky place. And, yeah, absolutely. Like, it was it was a joke to everybody else. Everybody thought it was hilarious. And it's like, it's not that. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, we were picked on constantly about, yeah. you know, like, we never had, like, the nice cars. You know, <laughs> we were late for everything. <laughs> I'm still late for everything. <laughs> oh, I try so hard to be on time, uh-huh. and it is just in my blood. <laughs> oh, when I show up like five minutes supposed to where I'm where like if I show up five minutes early to where I'm supposed to be, there's a little victory in my head. It's just like but there is, and so because like we were always late, my mom was always late. Yeah, you know, like who knows if she's even coming to pick me up today? <laughs> how many times Ooh, we were? Be a weird how many feeling. times we were forgotten in places? So that is definitely very much in my mind all the time. Like uh-huh. I am not going to have Bella be late to things. I'm not going to be late to pick her up. So, like, sure, in my own life, dealing with my own things, yeah. not quite as hard on it, but I'm definitely very hard on myself to, like, break that cycle mm-hmm. of... <laughs> oh, it's it's tough. Because, like, it's so much easier, like, getting up and going to work in the morning. I'm supposed to be there at 7. I get there at 7. <laughs> it's so much easier to be like, man, fuck it. I'll show up at 7.05, 7.10. The yeah. last job that I was at, I didn't show up until, like, 8.15, 8.30, if I felt particularly ballsy that day, it was yeah. like 10 to 9. <laughs> it's just like, uh. and I can understand, like... I mean, I'm in... still late, but it gives me, like, extreme anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> like, it definitely stop, stop. Has, uh, has an effect on my on my mental, be- mental state. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I get very, uh, like, almost, like, hard on myself and very stressed out. I'm like, oh, God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> late and trying to fix fit everything in yeah and it's like all the people are like oh if you want to stop being late stop lay down sir get lay down just lay down lay down i know i know it's exciting just lay down i'm sorry all my dogs are being jerks there we go lay down stay but it's like everybody's all like, oh, if you're, if you're late all the time, if it takes you 20 minutes to get somewhere, just leave and th- leave with 30 minutes. And it's like, cool. It's okay. a great theory. How did I never fucking think of that? <laughs> oh, you, you are you sick I'll of I'll give myself in? like three hours to get ready for something and then still run away. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, I know I need to be at the place at 7 o'clock, so I'm going to leave. Here it takes th- it takes fifteen minutes to get there, so I'm gonna leave at six thirty. I'll get there. I'll probably have like ten minutes extra before I need to do anything, and then it's six fifty, and you're like, "Fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it. Everybody likes, and I and I am one of the kings of oversimplification. I'm just like, "Oh, if you don't want to be late, don't be late." But it's like, right. "Oh, it's so easy." <laughs> Don't you just love how it just fucking body slams you? You're just like, hey, wow. My it's the body you. slam of love. That's it. Oh, Chuck's <laughs> going to force you to be friends with him. I'm grabbing another beer. Are you good? I'll take that other one out, I... please. But now it's... I fucking love oversimplifications. It's my favorite. Because it's very... It... It's... It's that's... so dismissive. That's another thing that's really nice in theory, but I'm yep. definitely somebody who... Who will take something simple and make it not simple? <laughs> mm. Oh, you mean you, you like to overcomplicate things? I do, yeah. Oh, it's you mean like anytime I have a conversation with somebody with a complicated subject, I'm like, where? Let's uh, let's play both sides of the fence and see how this goes. Everybody loves to say, and uh, fuck, it was Ashley, Chuck. I know, but I got. I'm trying to stop him from doing that. Um, I mean, he's ten years old. I don't think he's gonna learn, but. I think it was Ashley. I had po- I had posted something something on Facebook, and it was just like, oh, I'm n- I love playing devil's advocate, blah, 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 blah. And Ashley's like, the devil doesn't need an advocate. That's what he made orgies and heavy metal for. And I'm like, <laughs> holy shit, that's funny. I mean, the devil's advocate is good in some situations, but not in all situations. No. Depends on you the know, subject. Sometimes it's, you know, a lot of times it's not other people's responsibility to 
to to teach you knowledge on whatever yes. subject. Absolutely. And I shut the fuck up and learn about it yourself. I I used <laughs> to be one of the worst about that. And you know. And like I've tried my especially myself. as as a female in this current world, like a lot of times, like I don't want a male perspective. <laughs> I just Wait, don't what? want it. <laughs> you mean to tell me there are people out there who don't want to hear what I say? <laughs> Listen, what? <laughs> this is bullshit. I was lied to. And not necessarily what you have to say, no, no. but on you know certain you know yeah. sometimes. Well, it's like that whole mansplaining shit. I never quite understood that <laughs> because I I I hope I've never done it to people. You're, you're a man, so it's it's. You know, sure, you can understand to some sort of degree, but you're not ever going to fully understand. No, absolutely not. And, I don't, and, and to be quite honest, <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to fully understand yeah. because when it comes to men and women and all my nine, all, all my alphabet mafia gang, I fucking love that <laughs> shit. I heard that the other day and I was like, that's it. That's the LGBTQ, all them. They're the alphabet gang, alphabet mafia, whatever. All those people. I like the fact that we can have different perspectives on the same issue. Yeah. The only thing I don't like is that when those two perspectives can't be talked about in an intelligent manner. Absolutely. Without one, I'm not saying you don't need to get emotional, but if I tell you that your headband is dumb, I don't need you to get emotional and be like, <laughs> just be like, well, why is my headband dumb? And that's just an example. Yeah, I mean, that 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 goes back to, you know, I think, you know, something small like that. If Mm -hmm. if that sets you off, then there's obviously some underlying issues within that own person. Um, But, I mean, I've, at this point, thankfully, I'm at a point in my life where where I can take uh, something like that and just let it roll off my chest and be like, okay. That's what I wish. <laughs> if I could give everybody, a I like it. So I'm yeah. not. I'm not even gonna stop and give you the time of day to explain to you why I like that, and that's what I want to do. Yes. I'm just gonna take it, laugh it off, and then forget about it because. If I could give everybody in the world one thing, it would be that ability right there. <laughs> to not real, to just realize that not everything is something that is worth a response to. Oh yeah, absolutely. Sometimes you just. If somebody wants to be stupid on social media, which is the worst, obviously we have a lot of people in our friends groups that are probably posting some dumb shit, and there's I'm sure you have just as bad <laughs> as I do, where you just want to fucking keyboard warrior. Yeah. It that well, I don't get on there very much because of that exact reason. <laughs> my biggest thing is that if I give everybody in the world just one ability, it's the just you don't need to respond to everything. Sometimes all you need to do is just be like, hmm, okay. Uh-huh. Keep on trucking. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right, if that's how you feel. But everything is situational at the same yes. time as yes. well. And depending on what mood I'm in, maybe I will respond. Oh, 100%. I mean, <laughs> I've, I've, I've gone down the rabbit hole. I've absolutely gone down the rabbit hole and started the flame wars and trolled people just for the fun of it and things like that. But I've just gotten to a point now, especially doing this and like putting all the stuff up on my Instagram and stuff, because mm-hmm. that's what I mainly use. Fuck Facebook. Which Instagram is owned by Facebook. Fuck! <laughs> um, nine times out of ten, like, I'll comment back on something, but I'm going to just fucking comment something ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like, my mom, whenever New Year's rolled around, that, that video of me being an idiot, and my hair was super long, and she's like, oh my god, is your hair that long? I'm like, it's a wig. <laughs> That's what you're going to get if you fucking comment on any of my pictures. You're going to get something absolutely ridiculous. Like, oh, man, that, that couch is super sick. It's a rental. Or something stupid. Sure. You know? And I mean, it, Which in itself is, is a, uh, almost like a learned response. Or like a learned... A coping mechanism. A coping mechanism. There you go. That's, mm. that's kind it's of a healthy what I was thinking one, I think, of. though. It can be. It engages your brain. It makes you think of something stupid. <laughs> snappy. Keeps you, keeps you on your toesies. Yeah. So. Ooh. Just fucking life is nonsense. <laughs> Indeed it is. It's, it's so stupid. <laughs> it's so dumb. Millions of years of evolution evolved and we're this. Motherfucker, I want to fly. <laughs> Why can't I have like super fucking cool wings and shit? I mean, you can technically. <laughs> but how? I'm not getting fucking... Paragliders? Mm. Yeah, but those are external. They have those like squirrel suit things. Those terrifying. 
Well, you said you wanted to fucking fly. I know, I know. <laughs> what is the point of going up in a perfectly there good airplane out there. <laughs> and jumping the fuck out of it? It's nonsense. Get back down. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait for the fucker to land. Nah, ain't nobody got that kind of time, bro. I don't want to talk about this. Bye. <laughs> Oh, do you... I don't want to jump. You want to have a conversation? No. <laughs> well, shit, I guess I'm jumping. <laughs> oh, I wish everything, like, with the Jetsons, all of our cities were up in the air. <laughs> and just, everybody has a book we're working bag on it. With, a pack, with a parachute. And it's just like, you get into an uncomfortable well, they have conversation. they jet packs. Not yet. No, Almost. I mean, on the Jetsons. Yeah. That's I mean, what I'm like, saying. on the show, they have, like, fancy little... But yeah, if we were all up in the air and everything, just you keep a backpack for parachute all the time. And it's just like... Hey, do you have a moment to say, I don't want to talk about this. Just jump off the side. <laughs> It'd be the best way to exit any conversation. I mean, you technically do it. You just walk away. Yeah. I just think jumping off of a fucking... I've definitely, like, sick. you know, been in mid-conversation and just looked at somebody and then walked off, and that was that. Mm. What is that? Uh, I'm, I'm, done, I'm done here. I had a good old Irish goodbye. The Irish goodbye. Don't say shit to nobody and just go. <laughs> yep. I used to be the king of it. And now Lindsay's all like, oh, we got to say bye to them. And I'm like, man, fuck that. Get my in the favorite car. exit. Get in the car. I'll <laughs> text then, you later. Yeah. And then, fuck, yeah. You just say it. Just, all right, I had a great time. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for inviting me. And then you just leave. And then, like, you, the next day, you get, like, five text messages. Hey, where'd you go? <laughs> Fucking ignore it. You just noticing? Yeah, you just noticing. What the fuck? Anyway. <laughs> nah. Oh, the world's crazy. But it's going to be okay. Is it? Oh, yeah. I tell you every week. <laughs> hostile positivity and kindness. It's going to be okay whether we like it or not. Yeah, what was that quote about eating an elephant? You well, never heard that? I mean, I get what you're saying, like, one bite at a time. But, yeah. like, do people people don't actually eat elephants, right? Yeah. Do they really? Yeah, probably over in the non, probably in the less developed countries. I'm sure elephants have been eaten, and they probably still are to this day. I mean, I don't eat meat, but it seems like it'd be, like, really tough. I mean, I mean, I guess there's, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to think about, but game animals, they, they don't eat them. They, they're they trophy animals. No. They kill them just to be pieces of shit. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. You do realize game animals are anything that you go hunt. Deer, elk, moose, sure. things like that. That is no, their I'm game thinking animals. of like giraffes and... You're thinking of trophy hunting. Yes. Yeah, that's two totally different ball games because a lot of people like, I don't hunt very often. But I do know a little bit about it. So, like, all the tags, all the membership fees that you pay, things like that, all that stuff goes right back into conservation. Like, none of that can be... It, it, it's true. It's a law on the books. I don't know the law off the top of my head because I'm not that educated. But, <laughs> if, like, if you and I, we went and bought fishing licenses, because, I mean, you'll, you'll fish, yeah? You okay with that? Yeah, I fish. Okay. If we went and bought fishing licenses, that money goes, obviously, operating costs. But the profits from that go to the conservation of the fishing habitats to maintain those fish populations. Well, that's probably because they have to, because if not, then well, no, you're just going to... The yeah, I'm saying you have to, because if you don't, then there's not going to be any fish left. So, like, it kind of it has to be that way. Yeah. Otherwise... So, when that law was written back in, like, the 50s or 60s, I think is when it happened. <clears throat> somebody was thinking far enough ahead to be like, hey, all this money could make people rich, or what we could do is take care of the fucking earth because we only have one of them. Well, Unless it's fucking... We certainly didn't do a very good job of taking care of the earth. I think you and I did. <laughs> we did. I mean, granted, my job is completely counteractive to taking care of the earth, but, I mean, I don't go and spill 100 million gallons of crude oil into the Gulf of Mexico. Do you? No, no, I can't say that I've ever done that mm. or that I ever plan on doing I that. I get weird about pouring things out on the ground. <laughs> like, yeah, dead serious. Yeah. Like all, generally all the cleaners that I buy are like simple green and like bio cleaners, stuff like that. Because on the dirty side of what I do, um, I know how machines work operating sure, like which that kind in the of go, field. goes into the play where like as like individuals and tiny humans within this like mm -hmm. what we do doesn't really matter because yeah. the industrialized mm -hmm. world yep. doesn't mm -hmm. <laughs> and they then they never will because they've gotten free passes for years they'll continue to get free passes yes and so like in the end like 
I can recycle all these fucking cans all day long. Mm -hmm. And sure, it makes me feel a little bit better. But in the end, I know that that doesn't make a difference because of what is allowed. I mean, I think it... On the bigger scale. I completely understand that. I think it does make a difference because with your mentality, that spreads to other people. You know? Sure. So, like... But I'm saying even, like, as a whole, like, mm -hmm. it still doesn't matter mm -hmm. if we're going to allow big companies and, you know, big industrial companies to, to do whatever they mm -hmm. want and get away with whatever you want. I mean, even the, you know, where we live right now, you know, like the contaminants within our own water, like, you know, like we're basically, Eugenics. we're basically like a mini Flint and like, who's even fucking talking about it even, anymore? <laughs> like, and even the regulations that were put against these companies, they're not enforced. So like one that they, they never fucking paid shit nope. and they are continuing to still do it. Mm -hmm. And but even the fact that like a little bit of it is is even allowed to begin with is mm -hmm. absolute bullshit. Like and so like you know like the hog farms. So like, you know like even what's in the Cape Fear River and what comes down yeah. like trickles down. You know just yeah. and that's all sources of water return to the ocean eventually. Yeah, everything, everything eventually goes back to the ocean. Yeah. So and that, we're destroying it all. <laughs> It's because money is more powerful than the ground that we walk on, my dear. <laughs> it, it, it fucking but sucks. But in the end, it's not. It's not. Cause... <laughs> but we're conditioned to, to just think that way and yep. believe it and mm -hmm. just, like, not, you know, that's, that's the end. Well, it's like one day, hopefully, I'm hoping as the old guard changes out, as, like, the older politicians and the older lawmakers and the older like ceos and things there's like already a whole new set of people just like them ready to move in i know but we also have people that well, i mean are until it's completely dismantled there's not not shit's gonna fucking change yeah, yeah but we also have people our age doing startups and businesses on their own that are slowly starting to take away some of that shit from them sure well i mean yeah sure we're like when that and i mean Rome wasn't built in the day, so it takes... It's, it's but, I mean, the way that everything is set up right now, like, sure, like, these different people can come in, but, yep. like, it, it doesn't make a difference because we don't actually have a voice and we don't actually have... I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, we do, but at the same time, we really don't. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's like throwing a cup of water on yeah. a house fire. Yeah. At this so, point. like, yes, you have those radicals uh, that, that are in there and trying to change things from, from you know, from that sort of perspective, but... I mean, it, it won't matter until the entire system has changed. Yes. Until we get everybody going on the same track, yeah. it's not going to fucking change. Yeah. It's, um... I it's... mean, you know, there's there's a lot of, uh, you know, I don't think government jobs should pay as much as they do. Um, I don't think... I don't think you should be allowed to fail upward. I don't think jobs. that once you're done, then you continue to get a salary for the rest of your life. Mm. You know, there's also positions that are held until they die. That shouldn't be a thing. No. You know, there's there's lots of little things within it, within the... of, of how everything is structured that is just so fucked and wrong. Mm. <laughs> so nothing's gonna change until you, until it's completely dismantled. Do you want to hear the dumbest fucking argument I've ever heard about? Absolutely. About term limits. <laughs> you know how everybody's like, oh, Congress and the Senate and all them need term li term limits and things like that. So like the dude who voted on segregation can't be voting on fucking net neutrality. Yeah. The dumbest fucking argument against term limits that I've ever fucking heard was that. Oh well, if you keep changing people, you'll you, you'll lose that cohesiveness and people being able to work together. Well, how about people stop being a fucking piece of shit and just work together for the betterment of the fucking world? Well, I mean, it, I mean, it goes back into like the big, like the big companies, like the fact that you know they're 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 buying off the politicians. So yes. Like you know, it's yeah, like everybody loved <laughs> was it um. Everybody loved Elizabeth Warren. I'm sure people still do, but she's got like four fucking multi-million dollar houses. She does, yes. And it's like, okay, so she's a champion for the people, but her houses, her one of her houses is worth more than you're ever going to make in your life. How yeah, you which is that? not how anybody who is a civil servant should, should, it's not, that's not what it should be about. I'm not saying they shouldn't, shouldn't deserve be. their fair compensation because would you want to be a politician? 
I don't think I wouldn't. I don't n- no, I don't want to do it. Yeah. Would I do I think that I could do it and would be good at it? Sure. Yes. I 100%. <laughs> Absolutely. Cavill for Mayor of Wilmington. <laughs> Look out, Sappho. We're coming for you, bitch I mean, ass. I have a lot of educating myself before I even no, fuck that. Just thought run about. Just run out of y'all. Because the biggest thing is that, like, oh, who the fuck said I can't remember who said it, but it's like any policy that's made should fucking pass the, chuck, the inner chuckle test. If you hear something like a policy or a law being made, if you don't laugh in your head, you're off to a good start. <laughs> you know? Sure. So it's like everything should be able to pass the inner chuckle test. <laughs> and it's like, it, I, by no means am I saying it's okay what they pay politicians and what they can and can't get away with kind of thing. They deserve to be fairly compensated, but they shouldn't be fucking millionaires by the time they're done with it. No, absolutely not. <laughs> because you and I, we bust our asses doing what we do, and probably by the end of our life, we might crack a million. Well, I mean, that's the way the system is set up right now, is to mm-hmm. keep the wealth in certain places and with certain people, and that's mm-hmm. that's how the world is controlled. Yeah. And that's how they continue to keep it controlled that way. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's... Oh, it's fucking horseshit is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And, like, I got into a conversation the other day with the, the guys that I work with, obviously. I'm sure you can imagine. There are a lot of red-blooded ro- Republicans. I'm sure. And I got one of them to take a step back and think about it. It was only one. That's a ripple effect. <laughs> you drop a rock into the water and it keeps trucking. Sure. He was like, oh, man, I'm a registered Republican, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, man, do you know how I feel about the Republican Party? He goes, tell me. I said, the Republican Party is the most successful social experiment that's ever been designed for human beings. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, because the Republican Party teaches voters how to vote against their best interests. And he's like, his brain short-circuited for a second. I saw smoke come out of one ear. And he was like, we gotta get back to work. And then like an hour later, he comes back and he's like, you know, I've been thinking about that this whole time. And holy fuck, you're right. Yeah, um, but I mean, in the end, the two-party system just doesn't work. And the Democrats are just equally as bad as well. <laughs> the OGs of the KKK. They just, uh, they have a better uh, facade. Oh, yeah, it's prettier. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you wrap a turd it's, in it's, silk, it's still, dreams, a, yeah. still a turd. You know? It, They'll tell you anything they want to sell to sell you on the idea, mm-hmm. but it, <laughs> I mean, as we can see it as what's happening right now in this our... This beer will cure what <laughs> ails you, my friend. <laughs> Whatever it needs to do, it'll do. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's all fucked. It is fucked. And you know what the worst part about it is that I don't think that conversations like this are happening enough publicly. I think a lot of people have these conversations behind closed doors with their friends and sure. in their, their circle and their echo chamber and stuff like that. Um, by no means am I saying that everybody has an echo chamber. But eventually you get to a point where you kind of look around and you're like, holy shit, all my friends think like me. Fuck. And it's... it. Everybody will have those conversations privately. But yeah. Until we start having more and more of them publicly, I really sure. don't think that momentum is going to be I mean, I trucking. think people are extremely naive if they think that everybody has the, you know, you know, even my friends that they have the same, like, same thoughts as I do mm-hmm. about certain things. You know, that would be completely boring if we all had the complete, you know, you have to be able to have intelligent conversations and you have mm-hmm. to be able to to explore every facet mm-hmm. of 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 whatever it is that you're approaching absolutely and that's where i get myself into a lot of trouble yeah is because i want to see all perspectives i want to see both sides of the coin and the ridges and all that good stuff and the problem is that sometimes i'm not the best at it because i'll say stupid shit and things like that where you going bud Mm. okay sometimes i'll say stupid shit and like obviously like you said it's not your job to educate me um and I don't think it's anybody's job to educate anybody but themselves. Like, if you want to know something about a subject... Well, I mean, not necessarily. I mean, we have teachers for a reason. <laughs> well, that, that, that's not what I'm talking about. Sure. Obviously, like, basic knowledge I mean, some people, like you know, like you said, like, you know, you brought it up with a coworker and you made him think about something. So, mm-hmm. yes, like, conversations and, and, and you know, those... Mm-hmm. It is necessary at times, you know? Like, it... You know, I, I don't know. It's It's a... It's a convoluted it's, mess. It is. It's complicated. <laughs> it's fucking slippery. It's greasy. It's whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's just, it's, Killian, you, 
you met Killian, my little brother. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was talking to him. He's like, he's doing, uh, I think he's going for economics right now or something. And like his roommate, Carlos is a journalist and things like that. And I remember having a conversation with both of them a while ago, just being like, who do you think runs the best country kind of right now? And they were like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, what do you, I, I just like the best country. And they're like, well, do production. Do you want money? Do you want happiness? Do you sure. want freedom? Shit like that. It's like, because if, one country figured it out if they were the best everybody would be doing that not necessarily though i don't know <laughs> it, 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 you're right and they're right and that's the problem <laughs> is that the one problem can have 700 different fucking right answers absolutely it's it and and you know what it is a productive society to one isn't necessarily a productive so society to another. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Is it like oh? And not necessarily like productive, but a cohesive yes. and and mm -hmm. thriving. Yes. I mean, think about it. Like as far as super countries go. But right even now, that, like even that, has like connotations as well. Like what thriving is to one person mm -hmm. isn't necessarily what is thriving to another. Yeah. Like I've never met a billionaire. I've met a couple of millionaires. But the I'd say a majority of the millionaires that I've met were some of the most miserable fucking people I've ever met in my life. <clears throat> and it's like, yeah, money's nice. And don't get me wrong. Give me some of that money. I'll show you how to be happy. But. <laughs> yeah. It's like, Money. It, like you absolutely said, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Well, it's like you said, productivity is not productivity, thriving, happiness, all that good stuff. It's not the same per person. It's not the sure. same per culture. It's not the same per anything. Yeah. Because like, like I said, you got millionaires, fucking millionaires that are miserable as fuck. And then us, I'm pretty fucking happy. Oddly enough, I know the name is fucking really misleading. But I'm happy with where I'm at. Yeah, I'm stressed and fucking thing and other shit like that. But I mean, are you you pretty happy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what overall. I'm and we're by no means whatsoever even close to being millionaires. No, and I'm okay with that because I know I will, never will be. Exactly. <laughs> and honestly, if I was, I'd end up giving most of it away anyway. I. <laughs> and I'd like to say... Because I'm, I'm definitely somebody, I guess, which is maybe why I'm not ever going to be a millionaire. Is like, you know, like, I like to share the wealth and yes. whatever that is mm -hmm. that I have. And that's my biggest thing is that I want everybody to be happy. I want everybody to be successful. All that good stuff. Even people that I don't fucking like and don't agree with, I still want them to be successful. Just get the fuck away from me. That's, well, it's that simple. Most of them. Obviously... <laughs> Obviously, there's a very slim, slim margin in there <laughs> reserved for people that I don't want to exist. Come on, I'm not a fucking psychopath. I, I <laughs> but it's, it, yeah, and I, I think as far as our generation goes, there's a lot more of us out there that are like, man, I don't want to be the be all end all. I want everybody to be happy. Yeah, but I think there are just as many people who do not think that way yes. and that don't give a shit and never will mm -hmm. and, and their entire existence is is holding down an entire if not several demographics and Yeah. So I mean how do you fix it though? Oh I don't know. I don't have the world's answers. Yeah neither do I <laughs> But the whole tagline of the show is discussing and solving world problems. <laughs> no, it's it, yeah, it's it's she. That's why I kind of operate like I'm gonna do my thing. You do. I don't yours. know what would happen if we like took away money altogether. Pandemonium. For a while. I think for a lot longer than you think. Because like the whole thing, they're like, there's no such thing as private property. It's theft. Da, 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 da. It's like, that's cool, but I worked for the things that I have, and you're not going to fucking take them. Regardless. Right. Like, if let's take away money for a second in your in, in your hypothesis. Let's take away money. Mm -hmm. Well, if I grew corn in my on my land, and then somebody came to take my corn, no. Get the fuck out. That shit's mine. I worked for it. But what if I came over and asked very nicely? All right, fair enough. Yeah, if you come over and ask nicely, absolutely, you are more. Than I mean, that's part. Of, I mean, that's part of like why it would never work is because they're they're they're. 
individualism and it, greed. And yes, all greed stuff. is a very big part. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> Greed's a huge part of it, and I don't think ever, I mean, I we're think... also so conditioned to to you know mm-hmm. think in that sort of way, like I owe you, you owe me. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I've done things for people that I know I will never ever ever get repaid for and you know what it's not for like the whole clout thing or anything like that and i know me mentioning it is kind of counterintuitive to it but it's it's a real thing i've done it and not once did i ever expect that that person's going to repay me or do anything sure. like that it's just when you put a labor into something and i think that's where the whole thing kind of falls apart is that when you put a labor into something Obviously, you have your self-satisfaction and everything like that, but because of the way that we've been conditioned and taught, you do want some sort of reward system in place to where you're not just throwing shit, you're not just doing shit, and then people are taking it. Well, yeah, because most people need an incentive to do Yes. (laughs) And So what about, about, like, not necessarily, like, taking away all the money, Uh but, like, putting a gap on, on... On it. So, like, one person individually is not allowed to have, like, more than this amount of money. Um, And, like, above that, it goes back into the community pool. Yeah. Well, that's what taxes are. But they're not used correctly, so. Well, we don't... (laughs) We don't make the wealthy pay taxes. We don't make fucking... You know, like, even, like, corporations and things like that. Like, everything is basically designed... To allow them to get off of it while while we as little people. Yes. But that's where the whole thing of like where I said that's what taxes are for and then, oh, they're not used correctly. Yeah. That's where that falls yeah. too. Because like, yes, you're right. We don't, a lot of the wealthy corporations, individuals, people, whatever, a lot of them dodge the taxes because of the loopholes that have been impl- put in place by the people that we elected to represent exactly. us. Yeah. Well, that because in turn they're getting paid from that company, so it's like not a, all of them, but yes, I'm gonna yes, <laughs> we're, the we're, majority of we're them. We're on the same page, I promise you. We're front, we're I allies. Here. I know, but it's here's the thing. I'll, I'll pose it to you this way: New York and California, obviously, probably two of the worst states that responded to the pandemic. An entire country responded to the pandemic. Horrendously. Probably. Yes, but those are the and two... And that's st- part of the thing is, like, everybody says that we shut down, but we didn't shut down. I still work. We shut down for the wealthy people. Yeah. Poor people still had to, to do things for the wealthy people. Well, yeah, because we had to make them money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because if their money flow stops, shit's going back. Absolutely. But New York and California, have you heard the shit of what they're trying to do now? They're going to retroactively tax people so all the people that fled those states that are like man fuck i don't want to live in new york i don't want to fucking live in california anymore fuck this state they moved out they're trying to retroactively tax those people they're going to raise the tax rate and then i can't remember the length of time but the last one that i saw for sure was like three years so if you lived in new york from 2020 to 2017 you're going to owe them money on that new tax rate if this shit passes and what are those taxes going to? No fucking clue. Yeah. And I don't like, know. This is the first I'm hearing about it, so I don't fully understand. Um, I mean, I, I, I get what you're saying, yeah, yeah. sure. But it's like, it, it, I'm trying to figure out where I'm trying to go with this conversation. It was in my head, and then the shit got lost. <laughs> but I'm going to find it. I do that but a lot. It's, it, yeah, exactly. That's why. <laughs> But it's like a higher tax rate and all that shit, all it takes is that, like, let's say if North Carolina decided to fucking hike their tax rate up, right? This is uh-huh. where I was going with it. They decided to fucking hike their tax rate up. Well, guess what? Landfall's going to empty out. Because that's all those people that are worried about keeping their money. They'll go somewhere that doesn't have a fucking huge tax rate. Correct. So then you lose the businesses that those people bring to the area or whatever they happen to have and things like that, which turn affects us because obviously our friends, some of our friends probably work at those businesses and things like that. And then you run into the issue of fuck, nobody's got jobs. So by no means am I saying- If we didn't have money, it wouldn't matter. I understand that. (laughs) But if we didn't have money- I know, I know. We wouldn't have cell phones and computers. Because there's no incentive. Because you have to reward. Because the dog does a sit, you give him a treat. It, It boils down to that basic. 
I'm completely with you, though. I, I, I don't think money should exist either. The problem is that I understand why we have it. I mean, I do, to too. And I know it's a... You're over here talking about money shouldn't exist, and you're trying to run a business, Cavill. Stop it. <laughs> All right, enough of this fucking silly shit. Fuck, man. Know, we, we just got, got so dark. Oh, that, it's a the, dark world we live in. The first half of the podcast was the true Sad Kid Crew podcast. <laughs> We're all fucked. We're all fucked. I don't. I really don't think we are. I think we have. I think there's a lot more good in the world than there is bad. I truly believe it. I, I mean, I believe it too. It. It's just the way that we're going now. The, the the darker side is definitely winning. You gotta go through some rock. You gotta go through some rough shit sometimes to get to the good. You gotta live, laugh, love, buddy. <laughs> oh, I think one of those is gonna get a live, laugh, love. Now that I think about it. Zach, if you listen to this, I've got an idea. <laughs> I'm going to hit Zach up and be like, hey, buddy, let me get some markers. We're putting a live laugh up on that. Oh. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, that was magical. I'm, li- I'm not kidding you. I literally have tears in my eyes. I'm like, <laughs> Bring some light into the dark. (laughs) Oh Oh, God. Oh fuck. I'm gonna I'm gonna smoke a cigarette. That's what I'm gonna do. Oh you can do that. I'm gonna get another beer and smoke a cigarette. Holy shit, that was funny. (laughs) I think that was literally the perfect way to end that part. Podcast isn't (laughs) over, y'all. Don't worry. But God, that was perfect. No, oh, fuck. That turned into the fucking Cavill Kid Crew podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, More people. I might not have in. all the money, but I have some humor. That's it. <laughs> Go do stand up. Oh no, I'm good. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm unmuted. I am too. There we go. Now we're going to live, laugh, love the rest of this podcast. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to live, laugh, love about it. <laughs> All right. So, like I said, no more dark shit. We did enough of that. You know, we've been going for an hour already. Has it been an hour already? Oh, yeah. The shit, it's like time suck. Anyway, tell me about, stop it, running Vagabond. Because the fucking on-demand bartenders is fucking awesome. (laughs) It is. I think we launched at a really strange time, though. So, like, Mm -hmm. when we first launched, you know, everything was still shut down. And so it was a really nice, convenient thing for us to be able to go to people. But now that everything is open back up, I think everybody's tired of being at home. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're not as busy as... I thought that we were going to be at this point. Well, I mean, it is wedding season, too, so... The wedding... Have y'all had any booked yet or anything? We we have a couple booked, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but n- the the whole business of it all is, is very cutthroat. So, yeah. like, even getting your foot in the door in the wedi- wedding industry is a really tough thing to do. Yeah. It's... And especially these days, you know, so many... Places are set up to be all inclusive. So, mm-hmm. like, you, you know, if, if you have somewhere booked that already has like a bar built into it, then you're not, you know, technically allowed to bring in an outside entity to, to do those sort of things. Yeah. And I, I, and, uh, and I know it's a really great idea and mm-hmm. I love our camper. It's adorable and it's, it's going to take off awesome. a, lo- a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's, a tough thing to navigate of figuring out how to get ourselves out there enough to to be booked as much as we'd like. Well, that and the big thing is that it, I think it's navigating it and not fucking being like gimmicky and cheesy and shit. So it's like, oh, we're the we're the best bartenders in Wilmington with our adorable little camper and everything like that. <laughs> and then you show up and it's like you and I, and they're like, wait a minute. <laughs> Which, I mean, that shouldn't have anything to do with it. No, it shouldn't, but unfortunately it does. I mean, I don't think we've really 
come up with that issue per no. se. Well, remember, I've only worked like three events with y'all. Yeah. So I haven't seen all of it. It's just it's. I mean, it's also you know where are we at right where we're at right now. People don't want to pay for 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 the services. People think it's too yeah. expensive. And it's already lower than we should be going. Fucking cheap bastards. Just fucking pay the people what they're <laughs> worth. Fuck. We'll fix the world. You want to know how to fix the world in one easy step? Pay people what they're worth. Done. <laughs> or get rid of money like capital. <laughs> Whatever. But it, it, I, I love it, personally. <laughs> like, if I had the money and things like that, and obviously I had the space kind of thing, yeah, absolutely. I would absolutely do it. Like, fuck no, I mean, it's a, it's a genius idea, yes. and I know what it is. I know it is, and I know it's going to take off, mm-hmm. and, you know. But, like, as with any small business that you're starting, you, you're going to have you're gonna have obstacles and things to figure out as you go along and get established. Mm-hmm. I mean, y'all, I remember the last time that I worked with y'all, we, we had a pretty down pat of, like, getting everything set up, Ready to go. The biggest problem that we ran into was running out of fucking liquor. <laughs> so everybody doesn't realize how much their friends drink. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Oh. <laughs> hey, wait. Who's this customer? Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's. I mean, I mean that's also part of it. Is like we don't we we don't supply the liquor, so they yes. they supply the liquor. So we definitely you know we make it very. We try to let them know you know like anything. It's it's better to buy more. Anything mm-hmm. that's left over, you just keep. We we don't take that with us. You Absolutely. keep that. Um. And like it's. It and now it's an it's an ABC thing is why y'all can't supply the liquor, right? Yes. Because it, it, you'd have to have like a full license permitting something or another kind of deal. Well, then... you have to have certain certain permits, mm-hmm. like uh, you know, like day of permits yeah. or you know, the, this North Carolina has. Extremely ridiculous and outdated, archaic and draconic, archaic <laughs> liquor laws that they yeah. still and and part of the reason of that is because, um, the liquor is state run, and so they make money off mm-hmm. of it. And I mean, <laughs> so, I've heard and the and like yes, it's the state who continues to uphold these laws and and only enforces them in certain times because they they know what they can get out of of businesses squeeze every single fucking penny right yeah absolutely i mean like ale is basically like a legal gang first off (laughs) the ale people that i've met in wilmington what a bunch of fucking scumbags they are yeah absolutely and second yeah fucking come to my house i dare you fuckers but i mean the state is also a part of that no i know you know but like you said you know bars bars were shut down during during everything the liquor stores weren't. <laughs> oh, you mean the state operated in its own best interest? Absolutely, they no. did, and they always will. So wait, they're not here to help us? But we put them in that spot. There's, they're, they're supposed to serve our constituents. <laughs> I can't do it with a straight face. I can't do it. <laughs> oh, it's so bad because, like, down in South Carolina, it's private. It's not state run. Right. Yeah. Most other states like, oh, are man, like I go that. across the border to get my liquor. It's like, cool, you paid $20 for that bottle of Jack Daniels that you bought, but your fucking bottle of Jägermeister is $60. How do you feel about that, fuckers? My grandmother worked for the ABC for 30 years. They were uh-huh. very good to her, all that good stuff. And I asked her, I was like, what is, obviously, other than the state just fucking taking every single penny that they can from business owners and people that want to enjoy their alcoholic beverages? I said, what's really the advantage of having an ABC that's state-run, Nanasu? And she goes, price control. She said, because whatever ABC store, if you walk into an ABC store in Wilmington, North Carolina, and you buy a bottle of Jack Daniels for $30, mm-hmm. you can go to Murphy, North Carolina, which is literally the opposite end of North Carolina. And it's going to be the same price. It's going to be the same price. Yes, it sucks because it's a state-run entity, but at the same time, I do like that aspect of it. Sure. And most of the people that work there are super cool. Sure. Well, uh, I mean, store, you know. In the retail setting of it. Sure, absolutely. The people above them. Let me get a hold of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and I, I, I think it's still that archaic system in place because of, uh, I'm guessing the ABC probably started out of moonshining days. 
I, I would assume so. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Fucking rednecks. <laughs> no. No. It's it. it Oh, I mean, it's all the cycle of of, yes. of of how they can control the public. Mm. I'm going dark again. I'm sorry. We gotta live, laugh, love about it. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, I. That's why I tend. I know it's kind of a backwards way of doing it, but instead of, I, I'll buy a bottle of liquor, obviously, to keep in the house, kind of thing like that. But nine times ten out of ten, if I'm drinking, I'm probably gonna go to a bar because one going to support the people that I care about, unfortunately indirectly supporting the ABC because that's what they have to do to stay in business. Sure. But I would rather, instead of me just being a shithead and fucking getting drunk at my house, yelling at my dogs and Lindsay, <laughs> I can go out and yell at other people. <laughs> and I'm still supporting y'all and things like that. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 also, you know, a way of being social. Yes. Um, yeah, because we saw what happened when I didn't get any socializing. <laughs> North Dakota was a dark fucking time. <laughs> that was dark. Ashley said it best. She was like, oh, you went to North Dakota? And I was like, yeah. She goes, the social butterfly that you are? You must have died. I was like, yeah, I did. But it's good to get out of your comfort zone at the same time. But 100%. You know, it's a, it's, it's a good life experience. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because everybody can take... I only did oil fields for four months. Yeah. You can say whatever the fuck you want about me, but I fucking went and did it. Yeah. At fucking negative 40 degrees, yeah, I, mean, I, I was sitting I, on I've a rig. I've moved a lot, and, you know, I have a lot of people in my life, you know, who, who want to make these big, like, life-changing moves, and it's like, should I do this? And it's like, well, fuck yeah. Like, why wouldn't you try? Like, if it doesn't work out, you can just come back. And exactly. nobody's gonna exactly. think about you any differently. No. Um, it, 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 that's exactly it. If, you, if you're on the fence of making a life-changing choice, obviously you need to weigh the pros and cons, but if you still have the option to come back to what you had, and it's not going to be a fucking absolute everything falls apart, Fucking do it. Yeah. You got a life experience. You got a life and story. I understand like that. within that. Like, I mean, that's also like. Terrifying. It's kind of, well, it's terrifying, but it's also a luxury that not everybody has. This is true. This is true. I mean, I was very lucky in the fact that if, if I hadn't have been with Lindsay, I would not have gone. Because obviously, if I wasn't with Lindsay, I would have nothing to come back. Yeah. You know? So I probably would have gone to North Dakota and then like. <laughs> and I'd still be up there being an asshole, fucking arguing with rednecks. That's <laughs> the best way I can put it. It was just hysterical because, like, the people down here, don't get me wrong, we have country folk down here. We do. We have country folk. There are a couple rednecks hidden in the bunch. But, want to see some real rednecks? <laughs> Go to the Northwest, particularly in the Montana, Idaho, North South Dakota area. Yeah. Uh, Boy, I've yeah. actually never been been to that area. No, I mean you know, no. South Dakota, <laughs> South Dakota is gorgeous. Oh, I mean I'm sure it's beautiful. North Dakota's flat as fuck with nothing. I, I mean in I'd it. I'd go. It's in never Montana, happened. there is a reason that they call it God's country. <laughs> Montana is probably the prettiest fucking place I've ever seen in my life in person. Obviously, I've seen pictures of gorgeous ass places. Yeah. But whenever we were in Montana, granted, I mean I was there in the winter months. So everything was pretty much white and clay and stone colored. Yeah. I can only imagine what that place looks like when it's green. And it's probably phenomenal. It's probably life changing to see it. Yeah. I mean, you know, when I lived in Colorado and I lived in that tiny little ski town, like mm -hmm. it's basically like living inside of a postcard. It's like you live inside of a, like a snow globe. Yeah. I mean, we live in. <laughs> Sir. And it is absolutely gorgeous. It's, you know. I mean, we live in a postcard. Wilmington's on postcards. Not saying it's a good thing, but it is. So, so parts of it. Parts of it. Parts of it. <laughs> We're gonna take a picture of the bridge. No, I, I Look mean at this we, water. we do live in a in a very very beautiful yes place overall. And I think it's only getting better since I moved here in 2013. It seems like they're taking steps other than putting all these fucking apartment complexes up with mm -hmm. all these people who have nowhere to work and clogging up the fucking roads. I think but, I mean, there has to be housing. Yeah. But we also need... I mean, I would rather people. apartments than um, another 
another car wash or like <laughs> another storage facility or even you know people gotta wash parking their cars. decks <laughs> people gotta wash their cars and they gotta store all the shit that they don't use maybe just have less stuff yeah right <laughs> uh, stop buying shit <laughs> stop buying shit that you don't need please and thank you come on in bud i know it's hot out there but it, no it yeah Absolutely. The biggest, the only gripe that I really have about Wilmington, in all true sense of the word, the only gripe that I have is obviously whoever put the roads in place did not think of the future expansion. Well, sure. I mean, we were a, we were a town. Yeah, we were and a beach so, town. I mean, I think a big problem within Wilmington is that we're still trying to maintain this, this town a- aesthetic. Yeah. Um, when we haven't been a town for a really long time. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, and like I was talking to Killian about it. If you want to, if you want to fix the traffic area in your city, make public transport better. Well, I mean, that would be ideal. Yeah. I mean, you know. I mean, I got in this conversation about it. It's like, have you been on the bus here? I have. Yeah. 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 How was it? Very mediocre. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you know, I use it a lot. I used it when I was younger, Mm -hmm. but I didn't use it as much as, you know, because it's just not, it it doesn't really make sense. (laughs) Most of the bus stops aren't even like, there's not even a bench. It's just a sign on the side of the road and you're just standing there looking like a jackass. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's not designed to be like a fully functioning system that people can can rely on. I mean, they yeah. don't even run past like seven or eight a night, you know? Really? Yeah. No shit. I mean, I'm not sure the exact time, but yeah, and they uh-huh. they even there for a while was gonna were gonna cut that to like even lower. Like they no they shit. they cut a bunch of the funds from it and and reduce the number of buses and uh-huh. and and the times and everything. Like it's 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 not a system that is is to put in that is that is designed to be helpful in any sort of way for people who actually need it. Yeah, and it's. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not it. sir. <laughs> sir. <laughs> and that's like the, that's the thing though, is that people who But I mean that's I mean that just you know God, I'm gonna go to a dark place again. Okay. I mean that okay. I mean it's that right. continues on in the and the thing is like, you know, like the poor people are always gonna be stuck in a certain spot because the system is not designed to help them out of that. Yeah. So I mean it, it sounds like we just need some fucking compassion. Uh, empathy yeah. compassion empathy <laughs> yeah and you know it, it, it... I mean empathy you know for poor people in general like I mean you know going back to the money thing like you know like the uh, amount of empathy and compassion we have for wealthy people who commit crimes is so much higher than for how we deal with um, you know poor people who commit crimes out of desperation yes I mean, so, and, like, our society as a whole, the way that we react so differently mm-hmm. to to these subsets is, is sad. And that's, like, for me, I don't care who you are, what your status is, what your bank account is, or anything like that. If you're fucking nice, I'm going to be fucking nice to you. Yeah. But if you fuck up and do something wrong, I'm going to treat you like you fucked up and did something wrong. Like, yeah. all these celebrities that get away with shit, like, oh, he was drinking and driving, but, you know, it's... You know, it's it, it's fucking so and so. Sure. Know, it's the, no, fuck that. Motherfucker gets punished just like everybody else. But I mean, we not, we we do that even like with our own groups in society as well. You know, certain people get passes um, yeah. when they shouldn't. Yeah, I mean, we we have friends. You know, we have friends who we do that with. Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> it's just it's it's really hard because it's like i i like to think that well we're stuck in a quandary of yeah it's a it's a i believe it's a conundrum yes or a paradox or some sort of shit what's up nico nico don't care the nico purgatory. loves everybody equally <laughs> chuck loves everybody sir chuck loves everybody equally they can do no wrong hello fat neck Oh, I'm waiting. One day he's going to interrupt the podcast with a howl. I mean, let's get wild. Like, let's take away money and ban cars within city limits. Wild, right? 
Yeah, that's wild because I like driving cars. That's another thing that's Most like, people do. Yeah. But if we had a public transit system, transit that, system that works and our roads well, were used for bicycles instead. Yeah. <laughs> You know, well, that's like the whole thing with the electric vehicles. Everybody's like, "Oh, the electric vehicles—they're going to save us." And da 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 da. But You're right. But that's a luxury. Yes, they are. But <laughs> unless they're going to give them out for free, then that's not going to make a difference, right? Because they are—you know—the price on them is completely astronomical. Yeah. And it's going. It's it's only going to get better, obviously. With 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 more people, the only reason is that. It's because you've got a very select few companies making them right now. So the prices are going to get better and things like that. But it's the whole the, the thing that I was getting at was like bans, ban cars and city limits. All right. Let's go down that rabbit hole. Let's do it. I'm with you on it. I am. I totally am. Because I can't tell you how many. I mean, I drive for work. I mean, that that's my service truck yeah. out there. Sitting behind other cars and everything like that, and I can just see the fucking heat rising out of traffic. And I'm yeah. Like, Fuck. This is horrible. Yeah. How about I'll meet you on a compromise about banning cars in cities? How about we ban internal combustion cars in cities? <laughs> <laughs> that way I can go out into the middle of nowhere and still be a fucking jackass. <laughs> with my loud ass cars. Well, yeah. I mean, sure. I mean, obviously that that's a you know completely crazy notion but at the same time it's 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 not and but we've gotten to and a point things where that people are them. talking about because i mean you know yes our traffic is bad but i mean if you've ever driven in like a place like new york city and things like that like Raleigh? it's it's basically uh, impossible to get anywhere <laughs> yeah i mean it, it yeah driving in new york is a fucking luxury here we take it for granted and like in in the major developed cities that obviously have too many people inside of the city that it was originally built for, um, yeah, you're gonna have that issue of driving being an absolute luxury. And I'm totally okay with those places not having cars and relying on a public transit system. The only, and it's like I said, splitting hair shit is where I get myself in trouble. It's like the more rural areas because that's technically a city too so do you just sure. like, park your car on the outside of the city and then hop on a bus and take it into the city or i mean i don't have it all figured out this is your magic <laughs> wand Cabell. this is your magic wand i mean obviously there's a lot of things that that would need to be figured out yes and in the end, like, yes, like, there would be, like, certain rules to it, mm -hmm. but, like, as with anything, like, rich people would win, so, like. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you gotta live, laugh, love about it. <laughs> I'm gonna put that on a t-shirt. Oh, I'm gonna put that on one of the Sad Kid Crew t-shirts. Don't worry. I'm gonna credit you with it, and you'll you'll get all the benefits from it. I mean, I think the conversation has to start somewhere yeah. within it. Like, you know, how how do we how do we approach the problem? How do we? Well, we've gotten to the point where it's going to take drastic action to fix things. Yeah, but that's we've we've let the problem go for so long, and the people up top and the people in control have been ah, uh, we'll take care. We'll take care of it later. We'll take care of it later. We'll take care of it later. And finally, guess what? Later's here. And now we have to fucking do something. Well, I mean, we're also conditioned to to take the easiest route to, you know. Yeah. And 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 the, the most selfish route. And <laughs> what's, you What know? can I get out of doing this? Yeah, absolutely. Can I get the social clout? Can I get the likes? Can I get the whatever? Can I get the yeah. money? All shit like that. And it, I mean, it'll never happen, obviously. <laughs> like, I, don't know. I mean, it's, you know, there's, there's, and I get that people love their cars and a lot of, you know, yeah. people put a lot of money and time and energy and are very proud of their cars. Yeah. And like, I, I get it. That's fine. I'm, you know, I'm not telling anybody to not do that. Mm -hmm. um, but we're spitballing ideas. But here. overall, you know, like if it's, you know, it's obviously an issue, mm -hmm. and it's only going to get worse. Yes. There's only more people. <laughs> yeah, we're only making. And you more know, you know, Wilmington's day. not alone in that. No. <laughs> you know, it's it's happening everywhere. <clears throat> Absolutely. It, it. I don't know. I think Wilmington's at that tipping point almost, 
of like, because when I, whenever I first moved here, I remember within the first couple of years that I moved here, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you've been here longer than me, obviously. But whenever I first moved here, I realized probably within, I don't know, one, two years living here, I was like, it's Wilmington is kind of an in-between town. It's like you've got the college here, so you've got college kids, and you've got the you you've got the infrastructure to support that. Like you've got the downtown, you've got the beach, you've got the, all the bars, all that good stuff. And then it's also a retirement community of like, I mean, how many retirement communities have we seen go up in, I don't know, the past two fucking years? Mm -hmm. Just houses with gates and houses in neighborhoods with gates in front of them. And you have to meet a certain tax bracket to even be mm -hmm. considered to move in there. Yeah. The one thing that it always got me was that obviously we have the beginning of the stages of you building a life. And then we have the end stages of you with your life in the middle people kind of fall through the cracks because there's really there's not a whole lot to support here we don't have a lot of industry um i think our number one industry is pretty much the service industry just with the beach and the tourism and everything like that it's it, whenever i saw that i was like well shit what do the people do in the middle because like the college kids, obviously they're going to college and they'll work the service industry jobs or whatever have, no, have mommy they have. and daddy will pay for everything. That too. I mean that that is, that is a perfectly <laughs> yeah, it happens. And like they'll do that, but then when they graduate, I'd really like to know how many of them decide to stay. And then the people who move here in the end, well, that's the end for them. They're here to play golf, fuck off at the beach, and be rude to the service industry because you fucked up their martini. Or some silly shit. I mean, I think that's just people in general. They're just, you know. <laughs> I, that shit drives me nuts when people are rude to service industry. I mean, I agree. Oh. Obviously. I think it's. <laughs> I've dealt with yeah. it for, uh, the, you know, the majority of I my life I will never now. forget the night that you told me, like, like early in our friendship, whenever somebody asked, like, oh, well, bartending is not a real job. <laughs> whenever somebody said that to you one night. That shit drove me up the wall. Because, like, yes, well, I mean, the fuck it service is. industry is very looked down upon, whereas, I mean, in other countries, it's not. You know, like, it's, it, it, it is a career. Yeah. Because um, it is. And it, it, <laughs> so why do you think... Why I'm do you sure think some it's people down use it in, in certain ways. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes you got to make because, an extra bit of scratch. Because you're serving other people. Yeah, but... It's just like what's going on right now. I think uh, I can't remember who fucking posted it, but it was like all these people who said that the service industry wasn't a real industry, and now they're all mad because their favorite restaurants aren't open because mm -hmm. they can't find help. Which one do you fucking want, dickhead? Look, I mean, it's it's the American dream. We're 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 conditioned and taught and told that mm -hmm. that this is, and and you know, it's how society treats us and pays us as well. Mm -hmm. You know, like it it's it's. You're supposed to go to college, and you're supposed to be in debt, and you're supposed to, you know, get some grand job, and, like, you know, like, mm -hmm. the grass is greener. Like, there's always, you're, you're, you're told that you have to do certain things in order to succeed in life, mm -hmm. whereas in, like, it's like the, just some people, I guess, don't understand that, yes, like, serving people is, <laughs> Like a beautiful thing within mm -hmm. itself, you know, like um all these people want to say that the service industry isn't a real thing, but nine times out of ten of them they go to a therapist. What the fuck does this therapist do? They serve people to help them understand their own mental Yeah, absolutely. So technically therapists are part of the service industry. Suck it, nerds. <laughs> I mean, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you look at it that way, then like most things are because yeah. that's what businesses are is like helping out other people in whatever facet yeah. that they need, it, you know, and take away the whole fucking exchanging goods, goods and services for, for you some mean take away money? currency, yeah, take away money. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you said you, you touched on the American dream, like the American dream to my eyes was. You come here, you start with nothing, you work your way through, and then you end up with something. I mean, I sure oversimplify. Sure, I mean that that is an American dream to like an outsider, but to somebody who is is born in this country and yes. is raised in this country, yes. then it's always about you need a big house, you mm -hmm. need a bunch of cars, mm -hmm. you need money yep. and status yep. in order to be considered a successful person. 
Um, and that's what's drilled into you every single day on so yeah. many levels. Um, and, you know. They can keep that American dream, honestly. Yeah, I mean, they you know, you have to work hard in order to play hard. And, no. you know, like all of, you know, that mm-hmm. type of fucking bullshit. Um, whereas, you know, if if we, I mean, I mean you, just looking at, you know, the, <laughs> The wage gap and, you know, yeah. like the the uh, the the minimum wage and mm-hmm. like how many years it's been since it's even been raised in the slightest bit. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it's just very they're not even trying to hide it anymore how much they don't care about. No, the because it's people. always been public information how much companies make and their profit margins and everything yeah. like that. It's been public information for a long time. But now. They're being fucking disgusting about it. Yeah, and you know we're we're taught that these menial jobs are 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 below so many people, or like it's it's a bad thing, and like you have to work your way up. But like society doesn't run without these things. No. And so like in the end, like that's that's that is essential as well. Did you ever, whenever you were going to school, did you ever, did any of your teachers ever say you don't want to end up as a garbage man? Did you ever hear that, uh, that I don't saying? think I ever heard that saying. No. Okay. Uh, I mean, I have heard it. Yeah. yeah. The whole thing that drove me, the it it was a recent discovery, obviously. But it's like, obviously, teachers are horrendously underpaid. We can agree on that. Oh, especially right? in North Carolina. Well, and everywhere, I believe. <laughs> I personally believe. Well, yeah, absolutely. I agree. But North Carolina is pretty low on the uh we're also like third from the bottom on education level. yeah i think so we're like i think we're like 48 or 49 on yeah. like education so that doesn't level really and surprise pay me and everything much. like that and i'm not by no means am i saying mm-hmm. that our teachers are any there's no degradation whatsoever towards our te- no uh malice or uh negativity towards our teacher i think our teachers the ones that i know in north carolina are some of the best people in the world. The first off to even go be a teacher. Oh yeah, absolutely. Is a hell of a fucking thing. Sure. Do you want to deal with fucking like twenty kids that aren't yours all day? I, I mean, I would be a great teacher. I think you would too because you taught me some <laughs> shit. But still, I don't. I sure. would love. I would love to teach kids. You mean the same what thing as like you know, not everybody wants to go make drinks for other people, and you know, and not saying that that makes it a bad job. You know, mm-hmm. there are different, you know, different occupations and things like that because people are different and people thrive in different situations. Yes, you know, whereas like throw me into, I don't know, something that I would be completely. A, Unenthusiastic about um, my job. Work no, I love fixing equipment. things. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. It's like a puzzle. Puzzles are great. Oh yeah, puzzles are fun. Until <laughs> you realize that the piece that you need to finish the puzzle is not there. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. But like, I mean, I've also, you know, I've, I'm, you know, I've been around enough and 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 educated myself enough to know. To, to be well-rounded enough that I could put myself in most situations mm-hmm. and, and be fine with it and figure it out and, and learn how to personally thrive in, in that situation. But a lot of people aren't taught that and they don't know how to go about mm-hmm. figuring that out, I guess. Do you think a lot of people lack the... I'm trying to, trying to think of how to say this properly. I'm not good at it. That's why people... People don't come here for proper fucking speech. <laughs> Do you think people just lack the, I mean, essentially the self-awareness or the knowledge to really educate themselves or be ready for differences that they encounter? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, kind of like a just stick your head in the sand, shit's going to be okay. Uh, I mean, you know, put those blinders on. Mm. Uh, yeah. Blinders work in certain situations. That's it. I mean, they... Oh, no. People are being oppressed beside me. Let me put these blinders on. <laughs> that way I can't see it, so it's not happening. It's like... Well, well I mean, if you don't think that it, it directly affects you, then, like, why should I care about it? You know, like, we My as a society are, are brought up to be, like, very selfish. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people aren't taught to, you know, like stop and like, even like, like self awareness of like, of of yourself even like in a social setting, mm-hmm. you know, like 
most people just like aren't even aware of like what is going on around them a lot of times i feel like um i think a lot of people get to the point where they're like ah my opinion is important so i'm going to tell everybody about it and then they don't realize that maybe three or four of the people around well i mean i think you know there's also a lot of those people who who want to put their opinion out but then not listen to the the counter argument shit you're talking about me not pod- at all. I mean, we're yeah, sitting we'll here like, <laughs> you gotta stop that. Which is, you know, yeah. a, a step in and you know, taking other people's thoughts and 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 things into consideration. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And I mean, I've I've said it on a good bit of these so far. I mean, we're only at number ten. Which, by the way, thank you. <laughs> we're only at number ten. But if I. If somebody reached out to me, I said it on the last one, I said I'd have the Cheeto one, just to be like, fuck it. I'm so diametrically opposed to that fucking guy. I would still talk to him, because he's a fucking person. Love him, hate him, whatever the fuck, you want, to burn, you want him to die in a fire, I don't care. He's still a person. Not a good example, obviously. But, with I think this, I'm just trying to... I mean, I get, I, I, I get what you're saying, mm-hmm. but there is a very strong line for me to mm-hmm. like sure that 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 person is still a person, but what they've done has basically re- made me remove them from my life. And so, like, yes, they're a human, mm-hmm. and I don't have to interact with them, and I don't have to speak with them, and I do not have to give them the time of day, and 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 not necessarily it doesn't have anything to do with like treating them like a human or not, but like. Yes, yes, they are still here, but that mm-hmm. doesn't mean that they deserve fucking anything. Yes. Remember that small pocket we talked about? Yeah. That little small pocket for very <laughs> choice select people? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, hey, we're talking about that right now. But still, it's. I started this <clears throat> on the simple fact of being able to talk to people, one, hang out with my friends, talk some shit, and have a good time. And two, hopefully at some point, be able to talk to people that are that I think differently then. And I mean, that's like on, on social media and shit like that. I have people in my friends, my follows, things like that, that are completely on the opposite side of the spectrum of me. Not as like a, hey, I want to keep tabs and see what they're doing. That way I can see what's coming down the pipe. But another is just like to try to understand that way of thinking because I want to know about every fucking thing in the world. I want to know why the fuck we decided to paint everything white inside. Why is this couch purple? How did we make this couch purple? How'd they make this table? Why do you have that sweet-ass headband? And second, how the fuck do you do this shit? You know, I want to know about everything. Yeah. That's my problem, is that my thirst for I mean, knowledge I don't, I don't think that, that I wouldn't call it a problem. Oh, it is, because it keeps me up at night. I'm sitting there, and I'm laying, I'm trying to sleep, and everything, and I'm just like... <laughs> Man, how the fuck do TV remotes work? <laughs> And then I have to fucking fire up the phone and... Oh, yeah. Or take it apart and figure it out. I mean, I could do that, but then I'll never be able to put it back together. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's... But, I mean, that that thirst for understanding on, you know, so many levels Mm -hmm. is a good thing, not a bad thing. You know, that's like the complete opposite of just being completely oblivious to to things that go on around you. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying, you know, like that, you know, trying to... And maybe it's like your mechanic brain in there, like, you know, wanting to know how everything works. Oh, well, yeah. I want to know why that And there's nothing wrong with that at all. And there's nothing wrong with not being super concerned with it either. <laughs> like, either way, you know, some people are a lot more interested in those sort of things than others. And, and that that is okay as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, I think it's, I hate using this fucking expression, but I will. It's, it's staying in your lane, you know? Ah, yeah, fuck lanes. Mm. That's why some of them are dashed and some of them are solid. Fuck that solid line. I'm going. No, it's it, it's that whole thing of like some people operate better on being a touch oblivious to things. Like me, I there are certain things in my life that I'm just like, ha, 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 I don't know what the fuck that is. And then other people do the same thing, but there are other things. But a lot of things in my life and what's going on in the world and things like that. I want to know about it. Just because I'm a nosy motherfucker that likes knowing shit. (laughs) Essentially. Yeah. It's like whenever you're making, whenever we're hanging out at the bar or something like that and you get 
whatever drink. I'm like, huh, what the, what's that? What is that? What's the taste like? How's that? How's that made? Oh, why do you use that instead of this? And you're like, Emmett, shut the fuck up and just drink the drink. <laughs> no, I mean, I think it's healthy to be yeah. um, interested in those sorts of things. Mm hmm. For sure. I understand that that's part of the job is like people do enjoy watching it. Like it is like a, you know, especially where I work, it's a production and, mm -hmm. and what goes into it. And I completely get that. I mean, even like when I sit down on, on the other side, like I, I'm very intrigued with, with mm -hmm. watching how everything works. I um, would love <clears throat> at some point, I would love for us to go to like one of those super fucking high scale mixologist bars. Oh, yeah. I think there's one in Raleigh, isn't there? Yeah, there's a couple of them. In some week, one weekend, we need to go do that. Yeah, I would love to. Because I would love to just see, just to yeah, see Yeah, I, I love going to other nice cocktail bars and, yeah. and just seeing seeing how they operate and, and their ideas and what they're doing. So, you yeah, an ice knife. I just remembered about that. A what? Remember the Japanese guy that was carbonized? Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah, an ice <laughs> knife. I'll get on that, I promise. But, anyway, I think we've done enough. Probably. <laughs> I think we're good here. Good, good stopping point. I mean, we keep circling them back around. We do. To the we're darkness. circling right back into the fucking darkness. So, what we're gonna do? If you're still listening, I appreciate you. Everything like that. Cavill, tell them where they can find you. Do all that good stuff. Promote your, promote your stuff. Uh, I mean, you can either find me at the Blind Elephant, uh, at the skating rink, skate park, or I guess Vagabond Spirits. Fuck you yeah. can find us on the social medias. Hmm. Um. Other than that, leave me alone. Get them to serve at your <laughs> fucking parties. All right? You got a bartender on demand. She, they, all of them can make whatever the fuck you want. You just have to buy the liquor and, and y'all provide the mixers, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. Everything else goes. And make whatever the fuck you want. So, anyway, if you're watching at this point, I sincerely appreciate it. I hope Cavill does, too. Absolutely. Outstanding. Just remember, I love you. Bye-bye. Don't eat elephant. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat elephants. <laughs>